in this video, I've got a recording of a call that I had with Steve, who is a WP Eagle viewer. Steve has got a couple of websites on the go at the moment. One of them's in the pet niche, another one is in the health and beauty space. And he creates all of his own content for those sites. During the call, I ask him loads of questions about creating content, and he shares some great tips and ideas and advice. This video is part of a series of videos all around creating content for a niche website and all featuring WP Eagle viewers. If you'd like to check out the rest of the videos in the series, you'll find them all in the playlist, which has appeared in a card up there. You'll also find a link to that playlist in the description below this video. Anyway, I think that's enough intro from me. Let's jump straight into the call and see what Steve has got to say about creating content. Roll the tape. <laughs> Okay, so I'm joined now uh, by Steve. Uh, Steve's got a couple of different uh, websites in a number of different niches, including solar power, dog training, and hair and beauty. And I believe Steve writes the majority of his own content. So thanks very much for joining me um, today, Steve. Just before we start, do you just wanna give a quick introduction in terms of how you got into this whole internet marketing thing, uh, maybe what you were doing before? And- um... Crikey, well, I've been, playing around with the internet since the, the mid 90s. I made my first website in 1997 with Microsoft Publisher. Oh wow, yeah. Shirt. And then uh, I've sort of dabbled around with Dreamweaver and Front Page Front and page, Front yeah. page Express <laughs> and all of those. And then about nine years ago, stumbled across WordPress after having played with Joomla for a bit. And I've stayed with WordPress ever since. Um, affiliate marketing, I tried in the probably about 2002, 2003 and didn't really get anywhere. I then started selling a software product on eBay to help people watch TV on their computer. And I was making about six or seven hundred dollars a month, which was really nice. All right, uh, wow. And, and then I sort of got involved with Amazon Associates about four or five years ago. Um, and I've, I've just been sort of playing around with that ever since. I've owned lots of different domains and made a little bit of money monthly uh, but nothing nothing groundbreaking like you see some people uh, managing um I, I would say that in my in the past my sites have probably been a little bit spammy which yeah, yeah. Uh, hasn't been great and now we've i'm all done that we've all done that on, yeah i'm focusing <laughs> more now on trying to uh, generate some good useful content to you know hopefully develop a bit of longevity really well, you mentioned that your sites, are, they're all growing, they're all heading in the right direction in terms of um, traffic numbers, which is which means you're doing something right. So talking about content in in, in, in particular, um, how do you come up with your ideas for your content um, do you do, in terms of your keyword research and just coming up with ideas? I mean, obviously I've shared a number of ideas like Google and mm. stuff. Um, mm. but what, do you, what do you use to come up with? So um, the main one for me is using the, the Google Auto Suggest. So I'll... I'll do the classic who, when, what, why, yeah. can, do, are, and I'll relate it to my subject. So, so for example, can cocker spaniels, and then I'll put that into Google, and then I'll just go across the keyboard Q W, and I'll look to see what Google, um, what Google suggests, and I'll I'll think about what I think might be my useful something that I can can write about, um, and then from that. I'll then look at the all in title aspects of it, the, the search results, but I, I don't pay a great deal of attention to that. I'm more interested in, in the subject and whether I can write something about that. And, but I'll also look at the, the other um, boxes beneath the search. So when, when, what people also look for, because I yeah. find that often those questions are relevant to my main subject heading. So I can use some of those questions as subheadings within the article. Yeah, yeah. So no, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great idea. So what I'll try to do is I'll have my main title keyword, my main title phrase. Um, so one that I found recently that people actually do search for is how many teeth do Cocker Spaniels have? Okay. Now, I'm not sure why people would search for that. Um, but that's quite a good phrase for me to write about. So I can answer the question directly in the first yeah, paragraph. I mean, it's hard to write 1,500 words about that, isn't it? But but then I can also look at 
relevant subjects. So if somebody's looking to know how many teeth the dog has, then I can write about um, why it's important to look after your dog's teeth, yeah. what to do to help your dog to keep them clean, what types of chews you might be able to get that the dog yeah, yeah, can yeah. eat to keep the teeth clean, how you can use a toothbrush and doggy toothpaste to keep you have the a whole spaniel dental kind of article. Yeah, yeah. So I can so um I can break those down into into different subheadings and it takes the almost like the pain away from writing an article. So I, I think if you look at it and think I've got to write maybe 1200 1300 words it can be a little bit overwhelming. Mm. But if you can break that article down into subheadings that are relevant to your main question or topic and then you can aim to write between 150 or 300 words under each subheading. It it makes it less painful. Yeah, yeah, it definitely and certainly does. Yeah. Also, and it's also easier to to achieve, really. I can hear one of your dogs now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's Boris. He's uh, <laughs> currently dig, digging the lawn up. Oh and, God, uh, he's he's quite bossy with my daughter. Um, so that's, that's so, good. So that's, but I guess I just wanted to quickly go back on that point about the number of, do of teeth um, a spaniel has. So that doesn't necessarily have to be the the title of the article. That could just be a section of the article. And the great thing is that Google can now kind of pick out those bits within an article and link people straight to that, can't can't it? Especially if you've got a table of contents. I don't know if you've you realise that. Yeah, that's right. So I do use a table of contents in uh, in the articles that, that I do. And and I think the other thing about adopting that sort of approach is that. Um, I can go back to the article at a later date and add another section to it if I if I decide that I want to to yeah. update it. So if I come across something, maybe something happens to one of our dogs and I've had to deal with it or take them to the vet, so there's a, a specific condition. Um, you know, I, I can add that as well, provided that it's it's relevant to that subject. Yeah. So um, I mean, we you, well, before we started the camera rolling and the tape uh, rolling. You mentioned that you've been around spaniels and dogs for quite some time, so that that must obviously really help um, when it comes to writing. That you have got a lot of experience to share, and you don't maybe need to do too much research online. Um, and it kind of leads me on to my next question, which is, what is your your writing process? I and mean, does it involve just kind of brain dumping everything that you know, or do you do some research? You know, how do you? How do you yeah. Do so some of it, I think it's important that you can write about something that you're interested in. It is for me anyway. Yeah. Um, I have a I have another site that's all about dustbins. <laughs> I actually well, yeah. got I actually got the idea from one of your um from one of your live streams and <laughs> I went out and registered a domain and I and I wrote five articles about about trash cans, how to keep them clean, where to store them, what to do if you well, get yeah. maggots in them. And after five articles, I, I, I that was it. I literally binned it. I, yeah. I, 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 Oh, I can't carry on with this. This is all rubbish. This is yeah, it's all yeah. Rubbish um, is garbage, so by the way, to find America. I think I think it's important that for me at least that you have an interest in it. Um sometimes I can just brain dump it if it's a subject that I know something about quite well, such as how to train your dog to sit down. Yeah. But then other things I will go in, away and research. So for example, the the teeth example, I'll go off and I'll, I'll look at some of the questions, I'll Google them, I'll visit other sites, I'll see what they've written about, what their subheadings are, whether I can, and I, I don't adopt plagiarism, but whether I can sort of take take some of that information and, and adapt it into the subject yeah. that, I, that I'm working with. It's, so I'll, I'll use the research as a way to get information, but also to look for ideas as well. Um, and I'll look at other um, other pet sites. So, for example, if somebody's searching for can cats eat fruit, well, I'm not really interested in cats, but it, it gives me an idea for dogs. Can dogs yeah. eat fruit? And if yeah, and if can, then what types of fruit um, can they eat and what, what is safe for them and what isn't? Okay. So it's a combination of the two, really. And do you have a kind of a template or a, a structure sort of document that you use? I mean, you mentioned that you obviously lay out your subheadings and and break it down so that you it makes it a lot more um, easy to start when you know you only have to write a couple of paragraphs for each subheading rather than trying to write the whole article in one go. But do you have a, a, a document or anything that you use for that? Um, maybe or not? No. Uh, some people do, some people don't. <laughs> no, no. The only thing I use is um, 
the um, the tracker that Carl provided um, just to keep track of the of that's the really handy yeah so you I've just got a spreadsheet with a list of what you're writing what you've written that's... what you've published that kind of thing yeah because I've found that now I've got to over 50 articles I'm having ideas but I've already written about them <laughs> so I needed to do that and I also used the spreadsheet that um, that Doug Cunnington provides for the the, the keyword um, the keyword calculator, the his generator tool, his free his free uh, spreadsheet that he uses for that, just to help to keep track of potential posts. But generally, what I tend to do is when I come up with an idea, I'll I'll just put the title into into my site in WordPress and just save it as a draft, and then I'll I'll go off and and think about it. Oh, so okay. I've probably got about sixty titles there at the moment that I need to sit down and, and think about some of them I'll throw away some of them I'll combine into in with others and then when I find time I'll sit down and and write about them okay so uh, I know that Carl um, and his spreadsheet he I think he specifically used that spreadsheet to kind of keep an eye and keep track of all his um, outsourced uh, writing so do you ever outsource any of your writing no uh, and it's simply due to affordability um you know i lost my job in january i started a new job in february but i've been furloughed because of of covid so um i would i would like to give it a try um but i'm a bit skeptical as having read comments from from other people that have used outsource writers um it it, it seems to be sort of st sticking a pin in a donkey really just to see whether you get a good writer or whether you get content that is yeah. perhaps... No, it is a bit of a gamble. And a few of the other people that I've spoken to about this have said that, yeah, they bought content and then they ended up having to rewrite it anyway. So they might as well have just written it themselves. It would have been easier and quicker and, and better. <laughs> so, of course, I, I outsource a lot of my writing and I have had a mixed experience. Some of the articles are good, some of them are, are not so good. And, yeah. And I think it's important to try and um, and do your own. And you know, one of the things that I, when I first started, I was reading, oh, you need to do you know, 1,300 words, 2,000 yeah. words, 3,000 words. And it, it's sort of, it's a bit ominous really. So I think my first posts are probably five, 600 words long. Um, and I'll revisit those now that my writing's improved so that I can extend them. But it, it gave me a sense of achievement that I'd, that I'd done a post. Yeah, it might not have been a thousand plus words, but I'd I'd got something on my site. It got me it got me moving, and and that's probably what I'd say to people. If you're struggling, then just be kind to yourself and set yourself an easy target. Maybe do less words. Say I'm going to do one post this week, yeah. And then if you can, try and do two so that you have a sense of achievement and just try and build build from there and if you can break your subject down then then that, that makes it easier i find yeah so was, i don't think people should get too obsessed with the word count i don't think it's as important as maybe it used to be and i think as long as you're delivering a good quality piece of content and you're answering whatever the question is or whatever the heading is um you should be fine don't, don't get obsessed with um with the word count so um just talking about different sorts of content you mentioned a few kind of informational sort of articles but mm -hmm. what, what kind of other articles have you written what, what's your mix of so, content have you done product reviews buyers guides that kind of thing i have yeah um so i've done a few product reviews um i've, I've got something planned that might be a bit interesting on a, a youtube video around dog food that's uh, in the pipeline i just need to get that one sorted out but i've i've done reviews and i, I tend to adopt the same process with that uh, most of my reviews have been based around amazon products such as dog food or um dog training aids but i've also found some on other providers that um, i have affiliate links with through share a sale and affiliate window um and i actually managed to get a course off udemy is it udemy is that how you pronounce yeah, yeah. it i think that so. helped with that helped with writing product reviews and, and that was really really useful and um and and helped me a lot so I'll, I'll break it down into um an introduction about the company that make the product then i'll look at the features of the product then i will um look at um a more detailed that, sorry i'll look at the the company then it'll be an overview of the product then the features and then i'll do a what i like 
what what I don't like or what we like, what we don't like, rather than and some people use pros and cons, um, and then put a picture of the product there with with links in, and I'll work it I'll work it that way and maybe do four or five products. Okay. Um, so, um, perhaps, what, what would you say is the mix of content on your site? Is it mainly what, what is it mainly product reviews or is it other things? It's, it's more information. Information yeah. and question and answer type posts, response posts, rather than product reviews. I, simply because I don't like doing product reviews. I just, but I probably need to do. I need to do more of them. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I've been thinking a, about this because you can get product reviews from Amazon, can't you? So a lot of people will get that, but they're not always that good. Um, but I think, as you say, if you can do a really in-depth view, and I think it's even better. And I'm, I was talking to someone else about this. It's even better if you actually have that product in front of you, and you can really give a detailed experience of that product. Um, but I think, in terms of traffic and in terms of um, just the ease of creating content, I think response posts and informational type posts are probably easier. And of course, you can still talk about products within these posts, can't you? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, before we spoke today, I was thinking about an example that I could use that maybe wasn't related to dogs, something that I don't know a great deal about. And I was playing around on Google and I came up with the search query of, um, you know, can you grow tomatoes outside in the UK? Hmm. And from that question, I thought you can probably pull lots of different information out, such as how do you plant them? What sort of containers do you use? What varieties are the best? Uh, and you can talk in and around that. But then from that, you can then link to different products. So you can mention varieties of tomatoes and then link to the product seeds on, on different sites. You can talk about different containers, different composts, different foods, and again, link to those from that type of informational content yeah rather than, rather than doing a a review and saying you know this is i think this is the best compost or this is the plant, best plant pot when you've not really seen them yourself <laughs> and of course you could ultimately with that one probably end up linking to greenhouses and all sorts of things couldn't you yeah yeah <laughs> um so so that that was just i just thought i'd throw that in just to try and you know make it a little bit perhaps just to help to make it a bit easier to understand. Yeah, no, I think there's loads of opportunities to link to products in all sorts of different articles. So um, do you have any particular rituals or anything you do when you're writing? Do you put music on or is there a certain time of day you like to do your writing? Yeah, so I'm definitely a an afternoon and evening person. If you ask me to write something at six or seven in the morning like some people do, then I, would, um, I, I wouldn't be at my best. So this... <laughs> This sort of this time of day onwards, um, but really in the evening when I'm not disturbed, I can just sit down, get comfortable. Um, sometimes I might have the TV on in the background, and um, and I'll just I'll just launch into it. Really, I'll have an idea from earlier in the day what I want to write about. I think if, if I just sit down and have the the computer on, then I often hit a brick wall. So yeah. I tend to. Throughout the course of the day, I'm the, it, you know the cogs are churning away in the background, just thinking, what what else could I write about? How am I going to approach this? Um, and it's a bit easier for me to do that because I'm not working at the moment; I'm at home. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that that's a bit easier. So uh, I've, that's interesting because a couple of other people have said they they can't write in front of the TV; they find it really difficult to write in front <laughs> of the TV. And some, but then some people have said they like music. Some people have said they can't listen to any music. It's far too distracting. So I think everyone's got their own style and you've just got to find what yeah. works for you. Um, That's right. Best we're all, we're all yeah, some people like to work at their desk and others on the sofa. It, you know, it, it really depends on, on you. But uh, that's interesting. So um, I think we're nearly all done there on the questions. I just want to kind of finish off with it. Have you got any other tips that you would give to someone that, that is looking to write their own content maybe they're struggling a little bit at the moment you gave a great one earlier which is just kind of break it down into small bits it's, it goes back to that old adage of you know how do you eat an elephant well one bit at a time don't you so you know you just breaking stuff down can really help it and, and make it more achievable because you can just say right i'm just going to write these first two paragraphs that's all i need to do today and then then move on so is there any other tips like that that you, that you could share? so uh, yeah i would say you know, try to learn as much about your the area that, that you can. If it if it's something of personal interest and you've got experience in, then I think that's a bit easier. But you'll never have all the answers. Um, look at other sites that are similar in in subject to yours, and maybe some that are off at a tangent. So I mentioned 
I look at dogs, but I also look at sites that cover cats and hamsters and rabbits because there may be a snippet of information in there that I could translate into the dog world and write about. So do that. And then, and if you're struggling, take a break from it. Don't be too hard on yourself. Set yourself a realistic target. And, um, and, and I suppose if anybody's really struggling, just write, just write something, write something and, and if you're not sure, just ask somebody to have a look at it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll give you some tips. Do you and have points. anyone proofread your stuff or do you proofread no, your own stuff? No, I, I just read it myself and um, I, get, I get ideas off, you know, off my wife. So we were out yesterday, we were down near the river with the dogs and there were two, one of the dogs ran off for a swim and there were two young children there and they started squealing and screaming because they were frightened. I mean, my dogs are absolutely as soft as anything, but I thought there's potentially an article. Yeah. <laughs> in, um, there is, yeah. What do you do when kids, you scare some kids with your dogs or something? I don't know. Yeah, so maybe keep your eyes open as well. And um, Yeah, there's inspiration all around you, especially especially so, if it's yeah. a topic that you're into and you're surrounded by whatever it is you're writing about, dogs or, you know, if you're into cameras and that's something you do a lot, you know, you, you're going to be seeing things all the time that could possibly make a great article. Yeah, and I would say try not to get too stressed about it you know if you if you're struggling just have a bit of time away from it and do something yeah, else come back and, to it and yeah let the subconscious mind do its yeah stuff. i think that, that works with a lot of things isn't it sometimes if you, you just have to stop for a little while take a break come back to it and then um mm. and then it looks better and actually a number of people have said that about proofreading is that they tend to often write an article and then they don't publish it straight away they leave it for a day or an hour then come back and read it again and then there's suddenly it's like having a fresh pair of eyes and they're able to spot their mistakes and think well why on earth did i write it like that and they're able to rewrite stuff yeah. and make a better article and, that, and that's what i found with some of my early articles i've gone back to them and i've thought why did you write that that's <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah i think i think it's important to check over your work as well or get somebody to uh, to take a look at it for you Okay, well, thanks very much for joining me today and um, sharing your your experiences with writing. I wish you all the best of luck with your site. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you for sharing all your tips. And you too, and I'll see you on a Tuesday night. Yes, by the way, that's Steve talking about the live stream. Uh, do, uh, do make sure that you, you join us. It's great to see that. All right, mm. thanks very much, Steve. See you soon. Thank you, Alex. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful. Steve shared some great information there about creating content for an affiliate website. I'd love to know what you think. Do leave me a comment below. I'm sure Steve will read the comments too. I'll certainly read them all and I'll try and reply to as many as I possibly can. If you're not already subscribed, you can do so by clicking on my face up there. Why not check out the vlog channel? Click on my face over there. And here are a couple more videos chosen specially for you. Until next time, bye for now.